So, that was an interestingly fun running of Nickelodeon Thursday Night in America for my third episode back with Danger Force and the Mike Skinner installment of Warp. So, let's get into it. First off, how about the main Danger Force characters getting, you know, the main, you know, the regular Danger Force. This is the episode, like, kind of a continuation from the Big Beard Steven, um, Lilith, um, episodes where they, or they lost their powers. Well, they got them back tonight. And guess who were they able to get them back for? They kind of found a loophole since they couldn't get it back the same way they lost it in the previous episodes. Guess who they got it back from? The clones, the evil clones from the, you know, that were like playing cards in like that clone room or whatever. And, you know, we got to see, um, Lexi, I think her name, was it Lexi or Jen play out, Jen, um, Cater or whatever his name, her name is, um, played like Kid Danger's mom, you know, even though Kid Danger never even appeared in tonight's episode, even though he was mentioned several times, but I never seen Kid Danger's mom before until tonight, but I found somebody new today and, I just love how the, how the Danger Force got their superpowers back. Not from not from the people who took them in the previous episodes, you know, with Big Beard, Steven, and Lilith, but they got it back from the Danger Force clones, the evil versions of the evil counterparts of themselves. And oh my god, I was so happy. You know, one way or another, the good guys are always gonna win. And we do the Mike Skinner of yeah, goddammit, we beat that little son of a bitch. So happy. I mean, and the only one who actually came to help um, Captain Man uh, get, get unlocked out of that clone room that, that the clones trapped him in was, of all people, Schwaz. And Schwaz, when he was came back from um, doing what he had to do, he found out that the, the clones had gone evil. And he, I don't know how he managed to sneak past them without th them noticing. I mean, that was close like how petty. Tonight, a uh, Nickelodeon Thursday Night in America was definitely full of close calls. A bunch of Kyle Petty close calls. You know, I'll get to the ones on Warped in a little bit, but... Anyway, Schwaz was the one who saved the day, and then I don't even know where the regular Danger Force was the whole time the clones were going living la vida loca and destroying shit, stealing everything. <laughs> My goodness, but I mean, they eventually came back, and then, you know, because I love how, like, you know, I knew Bray was going to need him, even though he kept saying he didn't need him, he didn't need him, he didn't need him, but it was only a matter of time he realized what he was doing wrong, that he needed his friends to help him, like, fight off the evil versions of them, and, and you know, Ray was the first one to come back tied up in that chair, and I don't know how he managed to dodge him while church trapped in that chair, I almost said tied, I, wanted, I wasn't sure I wanted to say tied and trapped, so I'd combine them both, but... It was a miracle, and then all of a sudden the regular Danger Force had came and beat the evil clones' asses. <laughs> of course they would, and they got to shut them off, get, you know, took away evil Danger Force superpowers just so they can get the regular ones back to them. Like, you know, nothing ever happened in the previous episodes with Lilith, Steven, and Big Beard. <laughs> I mean, wow, that was... Really not much to talk about with Danger Force tonight except that. I don't know what next week's gonna bring us, but I guess we'll have to wait and see a week from tonight. Now... Warped. Do, 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 do. Dale Earnhardt Jr., a uh, junior, junior, junior. So, Josh Server guest star tonight. And one way or another, of course, you know, Chet Donovan really knew how to figure it and figure things out, just like all the good characters know how to do. If it's not about winning against the bad guys, it's always about figuring shit out. And I love how, you know, he lost hope and, you know, acting, you know, wanted to quit. But, like, Ruby and Milo convinced him to keep it, keep it going with the, ooh, to keep it coming with the, ooh. Thinking of jo you know, Chet Donovan, Josh Server, who follows me on Twitter, liked my tweet on this, so let's go. But, um... He just wanted, they just convinced him to keep it coming. And I don't know how Milo went so long without getting busted by, um, the, the director, you know, of the, of the show within a show, you know, the show that they were like, the fictional show they were portraying on, on Warp, you know. I don't know how it went long without getting busted. And speaking of busted, you know, there's another Kyle Petty close call when that, when the security guard played by that Roger dude came and, you know, got, grab the intruding fans. I honestly God, I love how Nickelodeon staged this shit for us. And you know, making you know, tricking us. I thought it was Ruby, Milo
Canelo, Darby, and, and Hurley that was going to get escorted by the security when he said, hey, you're coming with me. But it was to four other random fans. I'm like, oh, my God, that was close. Like, Kyle Petty. <laughs> I'm, I, I was fooled. I was fooled. And I'm glad, you know, the director mistook, you know, with the script mistook, um, mistook the main crew for actual characters. I mean, I'm pretty sure the actress who played that director probably got paid to, like, you know, do that. You make, to stage it and, I mean, they make that staging look so damn real. But they all did a great job. I mean, in the end, even though Milo did, you know, Ruby and Milo kind of did blow his own cover, you know, the director wasn't happy, but here comes an injured Chet, you know, a banged up Chet, you know, ready, you know, trying to save the day, only to get body slammed by Roger, the security guard, thinking that the, you know, he, because, you know, Milo gave him his helmet back. It looked like it was going to be a happy ending, but then it looked like it was going to be a cliffhanger, you know, when the security guard came and body slammed the real Chet, thinking it was the imposter played by Milo. But at the end, Wilson, instead of, you know, getting Wilson getting an autograph he needed, he got something better. A meet and greet with the real Chet Donovan. I mean, what more can you ask for? At least we somehow, some way got a happy ending and not a cliffhanger, you know. <laughs> and, you know, um, what else was in that episode? I'm trying to think. Was there anything else in that episode? Oh, yeah. Wilson had one hell of an imagination at the beginning. I don't know who that random customer was. I don't really care, but I feel bad that he got a plunger thrown in his face because Wilson had that whole imagination after, you know, after, you know, having the first imagination with Ruby and Milo and then having an imagination by himself after he gave Ruby, Milo, Darby and Hurley the day off just to get the autograph. But instead, they got have the ultimate problem. Instead of giving him the autograph, he wanted to give him meet, meet and greet in person in his store. I thought that was really, really cool. But right now, I gotta, I did wear a little press for time, so I gotta get ready for pivoting on Fox. So I will see you all later on in the night for that reaction video, like post, you know, after we get done with the Texas Terry Labonte installment of that. And tonight was the Mike Skinner and fourth installment of Warped. And you know, Danger Force, I've lost count because of my long ass hiatus. And you know, I've, and of course, when Slight Hustle comes back next month, I've lost count to that shit too. So see you all later on tonight for pivoting on Fox.